Hi, welcome to the Medical Center Show. I'm Joe Scott, President and CEO. Today we have Dr. Snady, who's going to talk about some of the special procedures he does at Jersey City Medical Center Barnabas Health. We'll be right back. Panapinto Properties, Jersey City. Shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office space and an address your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment. Adjacent to all modes of transportation. On-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 201-521-9000 or visit on the web at panapintoproperties.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers a quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. Welcome, Dr. Snady. I'm so glad you're here with us today. Well, thank you for having me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I've been a uh, gastroenterologist for over 30 years, uh, trained at Mount Sinai, and have been involved in um, looking at different uh, ways to diagnose and treat um, um, different types of cancer, pancreatic esophageal cancers um, over the years. Um, so you trained at Mount Sinai in New York? Yes. And where did you do your residency? Uh, at Mount Sinai. At Mount Sinai? Yes, yes. And so you're a gastroenterologist, but you specialize in cancer, um, per se? So you do some special procedures, right, around cancer? Pancreatic biliary diseases and also esophageal diseases, mm -hmm. uh, primarily uh, looking at best uh, ways to look at bringing out uh, the best options for patients, the most options, the best outcomes in realistic ways that they can, uh, that they can uh, participate and get better. Yeah. So when do patients typically go to see a gastroenterologist? I mean, they, sometimes they go to their primary care doctor and they might refer them. I mean, is there, a, is there a schedule of when somebody should really start seeing a gastroenterologist? Well, for sure, you know, when you're 50, Mm -hmm. um, that's the standard age where everybody should get colon cancer screening. Right. Um, that's been uh, well established, well known. I was involved in going down and campaigning uh, back in the ni late 1990s uh, for colon cancer screening in Washington. Got right. to meet many of the politicians down there and learned how Washington works. And uh, So you helped lobby to make sure that when patients reach age 50, their insurance would cover those kinds of procedures? Correct. Medicare okay. in particular, yes. Medicare in particular. Wow. Right. And, and so there's a, a screening process. So they go see their gastroenterologist first, and then w what is normally recommended for people um, over the age of 50? <clears throat> yeah, everybody should get a uh, colonoscopy. It's a relatively easy procedure, uh, especially nowadays where people get sedation. They're very comfortable. They don't even know they had the test. Uh, and the risk-benefit ratio um, is far outweighs uh, the benefits, far outweigh the risks in terms of uh, doing it and finding things early. And uh, 50 is the best. And uh, for Hispanic people, um, uh, uh, other t um, um, people that are um, um, black descent, um, that type of thing, the screening actually is earlier, 45 years old. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Is there, is there a reason why they have a it's genetic just, predisposition? Yeah, it must be, or? yes, something to do with genetic either or, or environmental diet. Um, so so black they, and they, Hispanic are typically 45 and, and, and everybody, everybody else, else is, is 50. 50. Yeah. Wow. So um, I understand I've actually <laughs> had a colonoscopy. So, and you're right. You don't even remember the procedure. Right. It's the prep that's a killer, right? I mean, right. that's... <laughs> well, they have to take some special medicine before the procedure? Yeah, I mean, you know to see, you have to clean yourself out. Right. So I've, uh, I've actually developed a, um, uh, a preparation that um, some people have actually described as delicious. Really? I wouldn't go that far. Right. 
but um, but it's it's you know it's as best as it can be. Okay. And um, you know we we provide the uh, the kit for the patients when they come in, and so it works works very well that so way. So then, typically, they start the day before their procedure. Day before, clean uh -huh. yourself out, and uh, it's a good chance to lose a little weight. So oh yeah, I always see that? point out that advantage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that, that is right. a little <laughs> bit of an advantage. Um, but it's a painless procedure. M most patients don't even painless know that they procedures, right? Most people don't know they have and, it, and, and then yeah, yeah, they get anesthesia or and, yeah. We we have uh, what we call a um, a uh, monitored sedation, and so the patients basically feel like they went on vacation, lie down on the beach in their favorite uh, resort, oh really, and wake up half an hour later and th say that was the best nap I've had in a month. Yeah, well that's great. See, yeah. especially somebody who's like an insomnia, right? <laughs> right. Then they get a, they get a little chance to have a little. That's great. That's great. And are they? They don't have to stay in the hospital, right? It's no, no. An it's an outpatient procedure. procedure correct. Okay. In and out. Uh, so same they come day. in in the morning, and they're they're and usually out. three to four hours right. in in terms of the whole thing. The procedure itself actually takes anywhere from fifteen to twenty five minutes, an average about twenty. Right. And uh, and pretty much we can do um, everything you have to do during that time. So one of your specialties, I know, is cancer and, and treating different types of cancer. Sure. But so. Typically, people get screened at age 50, 45 for black and Hispanic. But are there other symptoms that people should begin to be concerned about if you know they're either not in that screening period? You know, when does when does somebody really seek a get? What were some of the signs and symptoms that somebody might seek a gastroenterologist? Well, you know, gastroenterologists um, or gastrointestinal symptoms are probably uh, the second most common, I think, type of symptom that people actually go see a doctor for. Right. And you know, typically it's uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, bleeding, right. um, pains, heartburn, um, all, the, all those sorts of things. Obviously, anything related to the to the digestion right. and and the uh, and the abdomen. And so those are the symptoms that we will uh, try to um, deal with, diagnose, and and treat effectively. So is there one particular symptom that you're really concerned about that people should definitely go see their primary care doctor or think, the gastroenterologist? Yeah. I think if you're, if you're having a heartburn more than uh, once a week for sure, uh -huh. um, you certainly should see somebody and it might not be a bad idea to figure out what's going on in right. terms of that because that's one of the areas that, that uh, it's a new procedure that we're doing where people might have um, heard about something called Barrett's esophagus, it's a precancerous position, um, precancerous uh, condition of the esophagus that uh, you know about 30 million people in the United States have uh, um, uh, uh, heartburn and, and, and right. esophagitis, and then if you just divide that by 10, so about uh, 3 million have Barrett's and th uh, 300,000 in the United States have dysplasia, and once you get dysplasia. If mm -hmm. you're like around 50 years old, um, that is your primary risk, health risk. Wow. Um, there's uh, 2,500 per 100,000 people who get cancer, and, and that compares to um, any cancer is 350, and heart disease is 400. Right. So it's five times greater than the two other major types of things that you have to be concerned about. Wow. So it's one of our focuses that we brought to Jersey City Medical Center. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit, but but you know I used to be a pharmacist, and one of the big things everybody would come for was antacids, or you know um, they would come for medicine that would you know start stop their heartburn. <coughs> or I think GI meds over the counter are one of the biggest selling uh, medications that are out there. So, but when people have symptoms, they really, especially symptoms that are persistent, they really need to come see you or to their primary care doctor for sure, right? Yeah, I mean, most people, in fact, turns out it's just typical heartburn. Right. And once you know that, then you can be reassured once you're having the symptoms, right. what you have to do, how to control it. There's, you know, I have a f sort of five levels of plans of different things people can do. Okay. And it starts out from not too intensive to, to uh, quite intensive. And, and we can pretty much get people to feel pretty well. Right. Okay. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about the procedure that you do that's special at the medical center, um, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. 
That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center. On the web at libertyhealth.org. Seeing the ER doctor at the Jersey City Medical Center has never been easier. If you're sick, you just click. Go to libertyhealth.org and here's how it works. Click skip the wait. Select your time and check in now. Enter your symptoms, your personal information. Click proceed to confirmation and the doctor's waiting for you. The Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital, as ranked by U.S. News and World Report. Hudson County's only hospital to receive an A safety score rating. Jersey City Medical Center is Hudson County's only hospital to receive the prestigious Magnet Award for Nursing Excellence. Make the number one hospital in Hudson County your first choice for quality health care. Jersey City Medical Center. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. We're here with Dr. Snady, one of our gastroenterologists at Jersey City Medical Center, who actually does a very special procedure that very few hospitals do. And we're really excited to have you as part of the medical center. We were talking a little bit about the concerns that people might have with constant heartburn and how they get diagnosed. You talked about dysplasia. Can you explain for people what that really means? Is it from the acid in their stomach or what, what actually ends up happening? Sure. Um, the, um, the esophagus has a certain type of cell and that extends all the way down to um, where the stomach begins. Mm -hmm. Those are different types of cells. The stomach cells are designed to handle acid. When we have acid coming up into our esophagus, oh, it's a stimulus for the body to do something to try to protect against that. Otherwise, it can cause irritation, inflammation. Right. So any constant irritant inflama inflammation can cause changes in cells. And what happens in some people is the stomach cells start to move up the esophagus and those are atypical and not shouldn't be there. It's great that they're there because you feel less heartburn, but it's right. not so good because they're not supposed to be there and they can change. Oh, I see. And dysplasia... So these are actually cells from your stomach that kind that of migrate kind of up migrate here? migrate up wow. the esophagus, right. Wow. Um, it's a, something that the, the body does to protect it from getting right. ulcers in the esophagus and narrowing and other bleeding and things like that. Okay. So it does serve a purpose. but best way to think of dysplasia is, is a funny looking cell. Right. And so when f cells become funny looking, that's not a good movement. Right. And they will become very funny looking. That's precancerous. Oh, I see. And that's really a high grade dysplasia. And then it turns into cancer. Oh, I see. So its cells start starting to change because they're, they're in locations that they should, aren't normally there. Right. And then there's just continued irritation and then eventually there's a transformation. So that's how the process occurs. So esophageal cancer is a pretty serious thing if people get esophageal, full-blown esophageal cancer, right? Yeah, I mean, it can be if you can diagnose it early. Right. Um, it's 90% curable. Wow. It's really remarkable. Okay. And if we pick up, which we do when we do an endoscopy, to uh, screen people and, and take biopsies, and there's different ways to find the dysplasia, mm -hmm. If you can actually find a dysplasia, we actually have numerous ways to try to get rid of it. Wow. And it used to be you'd, you'd have, if you had high-grade dysplasia, your risk, as I said, was five times higher than even getting a heart attack. Many people would go for surgery. That was risky. Right. Then they brought in different techniques to um, burn it chemically or burn it with a, um, basically a hot metal probe. And that worked pretty well but it left people with certain complications, you know, in a, a certain percent. So I was, you know, if I had this condition, I always think to myself, what would I do if I had this? Right. And I still was not enthusiastic about that, although it was the, the last one called the radiofrequency ablation was pretty good. Then they came in about, started about 10 years ago. I got about involved about uh, six years ago as one of the first clinician groups to, to learn this technique where we'd actually go in and freeze oh, the cells okay. with liquid nitrogen. Wow. It's the same technique that they use for cervical lesions, for right. skin lesions. You uh -huh. just freeze it, falls off, what comes back is normal. Wow. And the advantage of this was that the tissue injury only was of the cells where were in this dysplastic layer, not deeper. 
Oh. So the complications are so much. I mean, I've the way I've designed the way I do this procedure. No, people just don't even know they had the procedure done. Wow, that's um, amazing. It's, it's really amazing, yeah. So we talked about colonoscopies. Yeah. This is an endoscopy, so it's a right. little bit different. So down the mouth. Right. Down the mouth. So do the same thing, anesthesia, do the Correct. patients asleep when, when you're doing this? Correct, yes. And pretty much painless also? Painless. Really? And same kind of outpatient procedure, they're, they're discharged the same day? Outpatient procedure, same day. And um, we've had actually people interviewed 45 minutes for uh, TV segments, 45 after minutes after the procedure, and they, wow. they just talking like they were normal, that's, that's, everything fine. That's great. So these dysplastic cells that are in the esophagus, once, they, once they're frozen using your technique, do they come back? or? Well, they just fall off, and right. then... You give the patient maximum acid suppression so that the acid, whatever comes up, is no longer irritating. Oh, I see. So, so the stimulus to form those cells is gone. Okay. So what comes back, luckily, is normal esophageal cells. Right. And you're basically cured. So again, people who have chronic heartburn, they're probably most likely to have this kind of dysplasia? That's true, but 40% um, of people that get Barrett's don't have any symptoms. Oh. So most of the time that's true. Heartburn okay. is a suspicion, um, but we're still trying to figure out who should get strain. And, you know, if you're a little overweight, you might have reflux, you don't even know it. Right. Um, so that uh, it's probably not a bad idea to get your esophagus checked sometime in your late 40s, 50s, okay. just once. But there's not a there's not a like a regular screening for col like colonoscopies. No, there's, there's, no, there's, there's no right now there's no recommendation okay. now. But I think you know that's that'll probably change. That will change because if you get it one endoscopy and you don't have the condition, right. you don't ever need one again. Oh. So it's a one time deal. It's oh, not like really? to get periodically checked. Okay. Every five years right. or three years, like a colonoscopy, or every ten years. Right. But if you do have the dysplastic cells, do you have to have a Repeat we'll, procedure every once Well, then in a while. we get rid of the procedure. Right. Then um, uh, it looks like you you may not need to get checked, but every five years, once you get rid of those cells. Wow. Oh, that's a, that's pretty amazing. But yeah. and you actually end up saving lives if you catch it early enough. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the likelihood that if you catch it early, the pretty good <coughs> cure rate then? No, if we catch it early, it's a hundred percent. Hundred percent. Wow. Hundred percent wow. cure rate. Right. So it's really important for people to understand kind of symptoms, signs and symptoms, talk to their doctor about when they might need a procedure like this because you really can prevent what is probably, I mean, if they get esophageal cancer, it's, it can be very, very deadly. Yeah, it's, it's a rapidly progressive disease sometimes and many times it's found, you know, much in much later stages and it right. makes it just much harder to treat. Yeah, that's, that's, um, that's really amazing. Um, so when the patients have this procedure, um, Afterwards, you said the cells kind of slough off. There's no side effects. They don't have any bleeding or anything like that from, from the procedure? I mean, the, you know, the, it, when the technique first started, there were a few, um, uh, you know, one in a thousand right. issues. But in the last four or five years, most of those um, technique type of uh, issues and problems and also um, selecting out patients with Marfan syndrome is right. just a rare disease, yeah. and those those shouldn't be done because of tissue changes. But right. otherwise, I, I've just you know my in my own personal series, my the only complication I have is uh, a mild chest pain for a day in one out of twenty people. Wow, that's it. We'll be right back with Dr. Snady to talk more a little bit about uh, some gastroenter or gastroenterology. We'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital as ranked by the U.S. News and World Report. Why? Because of its patient care, not its bottom line. Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. The Jersey City Medical Center accepts all patients and most insurance. At the Jersey City Medical Center, your health is our concern, not our bottom line. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org. <laughs> 
So we're here with Dr. Snady, one of our premier gastroenterologists at Jersey City Medical Center. Thank you so much for explaining about esophageal cancer and what some of the risks are and how we treat it. I think it's important for people to know that and if they have any concerns about it to go to their primary care doctor or their gastroenterologist and really get the screening that they need. Um, we do a lot of things at the medical center um, and you are one of the pioneers in gastroenterology. Tell us a little bit about other procedures that you do um, that um, really are not commonplace in a lot of hospitals, right? Well, what, one uh, uh, procedure that I uh, do that I was actually uh, one of the first six people in the United States to start doing this uh, way back in the 1980s is called um, endoscopic ultrasound, which is a quite an amazing technique because we take a standard ultrasound probe, which everybody knows you can find gallstones, look at babies. Yeah, that's kind of that and, thing. Yeah, that's yeah, a, they, they used you know, to you, you can see it, you see it on TV yeah. all the time, and it's amazing right. the kind of image you can see. Well, you well, know, we baby, they, so people get a point of reference. So when, when somebody's having a baby, they go and do that ultrasound. It's that's amazing. That's the same technique, right? Yeah, my um, daughter-in-law just had a baby, and you can see the features of the baby. Uh, the ultrasound is so amazing these days. Yep. No, it's, it's true. And, and, and it's the, we can take, they, they, um, companies have made these uh, endoscopes. Okay. And they put a probe in the tip of the endoscope. Right. And then we can pass that scope the same way we pass oh, like, an endoscope, okay. uh, right. mainly through the mouth, okay. um, and take that probe and go right up to the the um, abnormality in question. Wow! And since we're right very close to it, you can turn the frequency up, because as you turn higher frequency, the sound wave penetrates less. So that way you can't see things from the outside because the frequency is lower. So it's less of a clear image. But we're right against the pancreas, right against something in the esophagus, right against something in the stomach. Wow. So we can turn the frequency on, and it, it's almost as if I took a slice of that tissue and looked at it under the microscope. Oh my it's gosh. that much of a, of a powerful technique. Wow. So with this, we've been able to, um, you know, it's a very well-established technique, and it's available in, in virtually all major medical centers and many other places, but um, well, in terms of guiding thing. therapy yeah, sure. for cancers and, and making diagnosis that you just can't tell, there's something on an MRI or CT scan, mm -hmm. which are pretty good tests, but they're, they're kind of like um, you know, a Nikon camera uh, um, you know, at the end of one side of a football stadium and you're looking at somebody else right. compared to a telescopic you know, um, um, movie camera. Um, the difference is night and day in terms of what you can see. You can get the overall picture with the CAT scan or the MRI, but you can't make out exactly what, who is that person on the other side of the stadium. Right. Yeah. And with this technique, it's like as if we, we went right up to them and, and, and we could see who they are and what they are. And so when you do that, it's, it's the same procedure like, you, like you're getting an endoscopy? I mean, it's same? So it's, from the patient's point of view, it's exactly like an endoscopy. It just takes a little bit longer. That's really amazing that you can get those kinds of <clears throat> pictures from doing that kind of procedure. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's... No, it's, 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 just, it's just... It was really um, a revolutionary move in, in the field of gastroenterology. Um, it, it was, it's almost, almost was an import, as important as when we went from no endoscopy to endoscopy where we could actually look inside. Right. And now we can look inside with sound waves. It was a, just another quantum leap. Wow. in terms of the information we can get and how we can guide therapy and accurately stage people so that we can then pick out um, the best options for treatment mm -hmm. so that the patients will end up with the best outcomes. Wow. You know, wasn't there a while back a, a camera that people were swallowing also? That oh yeah, we they still do that. Really? And, um, well, and that's, but that's basically for um, uh, the small intestine. Okay. Because you know, that's a little pill right. as a camera but so is a camera actually in the it's pill? It's in the pill. Wow, that's amazing. But if you think about it, you know, that pill can, you know, I mean, the stomach is a hollow tube that's right. big and the small intestine is literal and the colon is a little bit bigger, but they're both all hollow tubes. Right. So that camera just spins. Oh, wow. The problem with it in the stomach is you don't know where you are, what you can see. It's spinning this way and that way, and, and you really can't get great images. Okay. When it hits the small intestine, now there's no food. And it's a really clean tube, wow. so as it spins down, you can get great pictures of the small intestine, which we can't see any other way, really. Once it gets to the colon, again, 
it gets, there's other stuff in the colon, right. and um, there's flips and twists and bends, and so it's not that great for the colon. So it's really just between it's just the really stomach for the, for the part and the part that we colon. can actually see right. with an endoscope or with a colonoscopy, it's the part in between. That pill is the best for that, thank wow. goodness. And, and um, we do that procedure at the medical center. Yeah, that's a pretty common procedure. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. common procedure. Now. Right. Yeah, that's just amazing, the technology and how it's been able to really enhance our diagnostic capabilities. Yes. It's, it's, it's unbelievable how... Yeah, I mean, it, it, just, it just helps us guide treatment so that, uh, you know, we can really get the best outcome and, and, and give the patients the, their best chance right. for that's whatever really they have. So down the line, we've anything uh, new that we can look forward to in the, the field of gastroenterology? I, I think that, um, that there's a, a lot of be work being done on um, uh, different microscopic techniques where the endoscope is, they're trying to use different um, um, light imaging techniques, infrared, um, ra um, ra different radio frequencies to look at the tissue itself as if you're under, under the microscope. And it, it's very complicated at this stage. Um, and I think that um, has limited applications. So we're probably 10 years away before we'll have anything that, uh, that's going to be a, a, another real breakthrough. The breakthrough now is really getting the word out, right. telling people what's available, right. getting them to come in and get their checkups, sure. getting them to um, um, you know, just get information about themselves. Right. And people are afraid a lot of times, oh, I'm going to get a test, they'll find something wrong. Patients don't understand that that is always true. <laughs> but they are always the boss. That's true. And they are right? always the ones that can say, you know what, I think that test is wrong, and I'm going to do, and they, sure. they make the choice. Right. The patient makes the choice. Yeah, and at it's the medical center, we're always patient-centered. We want right. to help them kind of make the right choice. But if you don't get screened... Then you, then you don't know what you're dealing with. Right, right. right. So just to reiterate for everybody, uh, age 50, um, for most people, for Blacks and Hispanics, yeah, colonoscopy starting at, at age 45. 45. If you have chronic um, indigestion, and then you should be really talking to your doctor about that, and that will help prevent you, uh, cancer or um, catch cancer earlier, right? And make you feel better, too. Yeah. Once you know yeah. what you're dealing with, there's many different uh, dietary right. medications for sure, right. but just dietary changes that, that are, can be night difference. and day, right. night and day. Dr. Stady, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, we'll see you next thank week. Thank you. Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital as ranked by the U.S. News and World Report. Why? Because of its patient care, not its bottom line. Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. The Jersey City Medical Center accepts all patients and most insurance. At the Jersey City Medical Center, your health is our concern, not our bottom line. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. The Jersey City Medical Center, for patients, not for profit. Visit us on the web at libertyhealth.org.